And as we promised, we have a special segment at the second segment. We are going to talk about Indonesia's pre presidency of ASEAN this year. So Indonesia has accepted its turn for the chairmanship of ASEAN and has been preparing significant plans to realize the warfare and advancement of both the country and others. Very exciting time. So let's find out more about Indonesia's dynamic role in ASEAN. And mm -hmm. today we have with us Indonesian Foreign Affairs Ministry Director General of ASEAN Cooperation, His Excellency Sidato Er Suryo Dipuro. Hello, Your Excellency. Hello. Thank you for coming by, sir. Hello. Good afternoon. Good to have you. It's an honor for us to have you today. So, um, Indonesia has taken the presidency this year from Cambodia, and it looks like um, Indonesia has used this opportunity to make sure that ASEAN becomes the epicentrum again. So, as the um, the theme that says ASEAN matters epicenter of growth, what does it actually mean? Well, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, this theme basically covers the, the whole spectrum of Indonesia's plans for this year. Um, the first uh, element, first dimension is to how to uh, strengthen ASEAN's own internal workings uh, before a rapidly changing uh, evolving regional context, geopolitically, geoeconomically. Um, and the other dimension is how do we uh, strengthen this story, this narrative of ASEAN as uh, as epicentrum of growth. ASEAN has always been about uh, economic cooperation, economic growth. And ASEAN is, uh, in fact, today, one of the bright spots of the world economy. Uh, so we have a wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, it's a sizable um, economy collectively, the fifth largest uh, mm -hmm. in the world. Um, so we, this is something that we want to strengthen. And um, it's also a source for economic growth, not only for ASEAN countries, but for the broader region. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can transform uh, tension, uh, hopefully, uh, and channel it into more concrete cooperation in the context of Southeast Asia. And uh, we'll, we'll have also a number of concrete uh, activities in, in those terms. So uh, ultimately, it's about uh, the Indonesian people. How would ASEAN benefit the people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, actually, uh, perfect then. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Timing, they say, is everything. We are starting to see the pandemic in our rearview mirrors these days, and uh, we have just finished up with the G20 at the end of last year, and momentum still continues to this year. So what are some of the benefits that Indonesia can reap from uh, having this chairmanship of ASEAN in 2023? Well, the immediate term, it would be an elevation of world attention on Indonesia. Um, world's attention will be focused on Indonesia as it did last year. Yeah, after the G20. The G20 presidency. Mm -hmm. Already in, uh, there's this research done by uh, Lowy Institute um, showing that Indonesia's uh, diplomatic uh, clout has increased uh, significantly. Uh, now it's a matter of how to transform that uh, diplomatic presence on the global stage into more active and concrete uh, uh, cooperation um, that will benefit the region and benefit Indonesia. So that's uh, the immediate term. Uh, the longer term is how do, we, how do ASEAN address pressing challenges mm. in terms of uh, regional health architecture, in terms of food security, yeah. energy security, financial stability, as well as in terms of concrete investment into infrastructure, green infrastructure, financing. So those are all in the plan for mm -hmm. uh, this year. As you mentioned, this is a great timing, especially for Indonesia, taking again you know, the global stage now here in the, in the capital. And also in Labuan Bajo, we heard that uh, the peak is going to be done there. So. Um, end of January, uh, you know, the, um, at the Bundaran Hotel Indonesia roundabout, we did the kickoff, uh, and it did uh, successfully with uh, Car Free Day as well. So, what actually is the um, impact so far that we feel having this chairmanship of ASEAN? The, first of all, the kickoff uh, gained a lot of traction in the region. Mm -hmm. The following week, there was the ASEAN Foreign Ministers meeting. 
uh, they all refer to it. My colleagues, the senior officials to ASEAN refer to it. Mm. So there is that uh, awareness raising yeah. of the chairmanship. Um, and of course, ultimately, the, the audience that matter for us is the Indonesian public. Throughout Indonesia, there is that awareness. Um, and then how do we translate uh, all of this awareness into uh, concrete activities um, that would benefit uh, Indonesia, benefit the region? Well, one of the ways is to introduce different parts of Indonesia to the world as well as we have done uh, anytime we have international events. Now, this one in particular will be held, as Aliyah mentioned, in Labuan Bajo. Yeah. Why was Labuan Bajo selected as the location? The, the president, uh, probably you by now, uh, all of us know, mm -hmm. has been pushing development um, of Indonesia uh, to eastward. Uh, to uh, central and eastern Indonesia. Uh, Labuan Bajo has always been uh, one of the tourist spots because of the uh, Komodo Island. Yep. Um, but it also has the required uh, geographical, natural mm -hmm. capital to promote it more than just um, a stopover to Komodo Island. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has fantastic view. Um, it, um, it would be the, the place with uh, marvelous potentials. Yeah. Um, so by uh, putting the summit there, it will raise awareness. It will focus resources into further developing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a part of that uh, effort to, to push uh, eastwards. Um, uh, you know, last year it was Mandalika. Mm -hmm. Now it's going further east. Right. So there's that aspect. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, also if you look at the logo of uh, our chairmanship year, uh, of mountains, of the ocean, mm. you know. Uh, so Labuan Bajo... Quite representative. Yes. Very well so. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Great. I mean, it's very lovely if you do it in Labuan Bajo. I mean, I would love to go there and have... You haven't been. Me uh, neither. Uh, I've just seen yeah. it. I feel like I've been there because I see it on my social media. But <laughs> will the summit be held in some kind of a boat or something? Because <laughs> it's going to be, ha you know, very nice to see the sceneries and all that. Just make sure if the uh, infrastructure is there already as well, sir. The infrastructure um, is there. It's being built. Mm -hmm. um, there is this uh, convention center that is uh, in its um, uh, final stage of uh, finishing as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, the road uh, to to the, this facility, um, I think it's by now probably completed. Um, and leaders will be presented with a magnificent view uh, leading to, towards the convention center, mm -hmm. um, at the convention center. Um, and I think um, the coverage, media coverage uh, of it will, will also give uh, another perspective of Indonesia that we usually don't see when it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bali has a fantastic uh, yeah. facilities. It's uh, well tested. It can handle any kinds of meetings. Jakarta, mm -hmm. um, and we'll show uh, Labuan, Labuan Bajo, Bajo and uh, how it handles uh, everything. I think all of us are upbeat about the prospect. Yeah, and I think we we also fail to sometimes recognize <laughs> that after these events are over these infrastructures yeah. remain, so yeah. it's kind of like almost speeding up or fast-forwarding the development That's of a true. particular area that may not have developed as fast without something like this happening there as well. Okay. So, um, with since the, uh, the venue or the place itself is almost ready, are there any other challenges that uh, Indonesia is foreseeing before the event? Um, in terms of uh, policy or Instead in terms of... the of... ASEAN, just the chairmanship event itself. Well, uh, in terms of... Um, the logistical side, of course, we are preparing uh, for, uh, for everything. Right. We want to ensure that ASEAN leaders, uh, not only will they be comfortable and, and secure, mm -hmm. but ultimately all of this is, is in support of an effective meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the first summit, the one in May, that will focus on internal ASEAN matters, um, housekeeping, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be uh, interface between ASEAN leaders and uh, ASEAN business leaders, um, youth leaders, uh, parliamentarians, members of parliament. Mm -hmm. 
um, and also with uh, what we call a high-level task force on post ASEAN 2025. Well, talking about challenges, uh, last year we know that the EU and uh, have have organized, you know, the top ASEAN leaders, and we have recognized the approach of quite a very aggressive uh, towards ASEAN, Asia Pacific, uh, from the West. So, how do you think the role of Indonesia can actually uh, be in this kind of setting where it is very dynamic, and we are not towards any, you know, uh, magnif uh, magnitude yet, but. We know that the world issues are so uh, dynamic right now. The sea territories, for example, and some of the ASEAN members are, you know, nearing towards that specific country. So how do you think the role of Indonesia can play here? The um, activities with the EU, uh, with the US, these summits, mm -hmm. these are uh, constructive uh, events. Uh, these are uh, productive. They, they have their interests, um, various kinds of interests. ASEAN too, collectively, has uh, an interest. Um, and namely, in this context, is to uh, promote and strengthen ASEAN centrality. Um, and uh, in our negotiations with the EU, uh, with the US, that centrality is being supported. Mm -hmm. It's a matter for ASEAN uh, how mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, the centrality is maintained. Um, when we talk about centrality, we um, inadvertently are talking about three interlocking concepts, concepts of geographical centrality. Southeast Asia is, is central, it's critical for the world, world economy, world stability and security. Uh, ASEAN has this institutional centrality. Everybody comes to um, ASEAN meetings, uh, various <coughs> major countries and diplomatic centrality. A lot of diplomatic undertakings take place during uh, ASEAN meetings. So we have this capital. And of course, ASEAN is also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a market of uh, over 600 million people, growing economic cloud. Uh, so everybody has an interest in ensuring that ASEAN continues to be productive. They are stakeholders in ASEAN security and prosperity. Let's uh, shift gears for a second and discuss uh, something that Indonesia initiated quite some time back called the ASEAN Outlook on the Indo-Pacific or AOIP. It was then adopted by the leaders in 2019. So how does this work with other Indo-Pacific strategies that were established by other countries, in maybe even the EU? Let me say that AOIP, um, on, at the first instance, is a response to the various Indo-Pacific uh, strategy that has that uh, potential uh, to create tension okay. because of uh, varying strategic interests, geopolitical interests. So AYP is ASEAN's response to that. Okay. Uh, that to engage in ASEAN, to engage in ASEAN countries, uh, whether you want to go through ASEAN waters or you want to go to ASEAN countries, uh, whatever strategy you have, um, this is our modality for engagement. Okay. Um, but actually, our view of the Indo-Pacific has been established 20 years now with the establishment of the East, East Asia Summit. Yeah. This was in uh, 2004, um, the first meeting, uh, the first decision. And it involves the 10 ASEAN countries, Australia, New Zealand, China, Japan, Korea, India, uh, and then uh, Russia and the United States joined in 2011, also during Indonesia's chairmanship. So we actually were practicing Indo-Pacific before anybody came up with the term Indo-Pacific. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Good so point. when we talk about ASEAN and now Indonesia is taking the presidency, we cannot forget Myanmar. And this is the problem that hasn't been resolved for quite some time. And the international now is also in doubts whether ASEAN can do something about it, right? So it, we heard that Indonesia will also take serious a step in resolving the Myanmar's case. And Indonesia uh, President Joko Widodo will send a general to hold the dialogues with Myanmar's military junta. What is exactly Indonesia's perspective towards Myanmar? 
I mean, we already uh, already agreed that we're going to go for with the uh, five point consensus. So, what is exactly the uh, perspective of Indonesia in this case? The mandate of the chair as agreed by leaders almost two years ago. It's, mm -hmm. it's the five-point consensus you mentioned. Yeah. And that is, um, in essence, it's a cessation of violence, humanitarian assistance, and the holding of an inclusive dialogue. Mm -hmm. So this is what, um, as chair of ASEAN, this is where we are focused on um, in implementing these three phases. The phases could be, um, uh, it could be in stages, uh, it could be concurrently, uh, depending on uh, how things take place. Um, and we are committed and also have the mandate to undertake communication with all sides. Mm. So this would be the message in, in such a, a communication with all sides. Um, a lot of it, of course, uh, takes place uh, behind the scenes because of um, the need to, to create that comfort zone uh, for everybody to speak openly. Yeah. Things that they may not necessarily be comfortable in speaking openly uh, in public. So we can also find that uh, a working formula. Right. But the focus is on implementation of the five-point consensus. And remember, Myanmar is on, in our region. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, if not all, ASEAN member states are concerned about um, regional stability in the context of uh, Myanmar. So. All ASEAN foreign ministers supported uh, Indonesia's plan that uh, Foreign Minister Ratno Marsudi uh, uh, briefed them about um, almost two weeks ago. They all supported it. And uh, so she is on, on, on good grounds to, uh, to pursue and the office of the special envoy is among the, the means to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the meanwhile, um, the president as chair of ASEAN uh, in consultation with foreign minister, uh, we'll also look at various options in implementing the mandate. Indeed, and uh, you did say this is a meeting for all of the leaders within the region. We do hope that if you know Myanmar can come back to the table, that will certainly be a groundbreaking milestone sure. during Indonesia's chairmanship. So, um, real quick, uh, aside from the formal meetings that we've talked about and all the business that's going to take place, what other sorts of events and activities can people look forward to for this particular event? And perhaps how can people be more integrated or involved yeah. um, as Indonesians now that we are more aware of this? big event going on this year? There will be over 400 meetings at various levels uh, throughout Indonesia. So um, people of Indonesia can, can uh, follow them on media, um, CTV not, not the least. <laughs> um, we have been engaging with youth, uh, youth organizations, so there will be various activities. Uh, done by youth. Um, we are engaging with uh, what is called the uh, Pusat Studi ASEAN, ASEAN Study Centers throughout various universities. I think uh, by now there's uh, uh, about uh, 70 plus of such centers. And so we have uh, engagements uh, uh, with them. Um, and you will continue to see uh, these activities uh, uh, on the media. And then there will be a number of uh, activities. Uh, there will be the uh, uh, youth dialogue uh, for SDGs. There will be the uh, creative economy uh, business forum, um, the ASEAN Indo-Pacific infrastructure forum, and the uh, ASEAN business and investment summits throughout the year. And the last two will be um, back-to-back uh, -back with the ASEAN summits in Jakarta in September. Mm -hmm. Looks like a lot of uh, events. Busy year coming up. Yeah, very busy. Hopefully everything goes well until May 2023. Yes. And thank you so much for giving us uh, all the insights here at the sea today. Um, so, um, His Excellency Sidarto Suryo Dipuro, thank you so much for coming. And all the way to the summit in Labuan Bajo. Thanks for Asia dropping by, sir. Year. All right. It's a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure being here. Thank all you. All right. We're going to take our... Uh, second short break of this hour. Yes, and after the break, Kai will deliver some economics and business updates. So stay here only on the 3-hour news show on C Today.